Welcome back to Black Eagle Ranch, everybody. Okay, today is another day, and if you've been following along with us on these videos, you'll know that we've been working on this rain harvesting system um, for probably, gosh, five, six weeks or more. It started with just getting the gutters up, um, which took a little while, and then we've got the tanks in place. We have two 5,000 gallon tanks. We have a total capacity of 10,000. Um, and you saw us kind of get the catchment system um, where we've been getting all the, from the gutters, collecting the water to get it over to the tank. And we've done a wet system. Um, so that's just kind of a summary and we're dumping it in the top of these two 5,000 gallon tanks. So we are only collecting one half of the, the pavilion right now from the roof. So it's 3,000 square feet. Um, the other half is just going to come a little bit later. We're stockpiling what we can right now. And uh, yeah, so I think one of the next bigger projects will be getting the other half. Um, it's just that it's so much further to go. So we haven't touched it yet. But this week, the exciting news is that supposedly it rained. And so I, I'm checking the Doppler and it rained this week. So we're going to find out how much water we've got. Um, I'm anxious and a little eager to find that out. But a lot of today's stuff is gonna be figuring out all the water, getting it all put together. Um, most everything's done, we just need to connect the manifold between the tanks over to the pipe that goes down to the troughs. Um, touch that up a little bit. And then at the troughs, we're gonna add some valves and uh, put on our little water valve. So hopefully, if it all goes well, we'll actually be able to fill up the water trough and uh, see if we can actually hold water and get that set. So that's hopefully what we're doing today. But uh, I wanna know how much water there is. So let's get going. You know, it's interesting, besides hugging, the water tank is actually cool to the touch. And you can touch it and you can feel the cold water but if you go up, it's warm. And that changes right about here, which would put 3,000 gallons in the tank, which means this week we got 1,000 gallons. Let's see if it passes the sound test. I'd say we're probably a little over 3,000 gallons. Let's see if you guys can hear that. It's 3,000 gallons. So hey, 3,000 gallons is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, I would love some bigger storms, so. If anybody's listening that has control over the weather patterns, uh, send a little bit more rain our way. We've had three hurricanes come up through the Gulf and they all hit Louisiana. We apologize for any damage there, but I would have gladly taken some of that rain if you would have given it. So, anyway, we got some other things to do. Um, I'm gonna get cracking. said I should go ahead and actually uh, glue all those and uh, so I guess I glue them. Again, keep in mind, this is the down outlet so there's not gonna be any water pressure in this at all. The glue is really just to help it actually hold and so it doesn't pop back out. Um, I'm just gonna screw things down here at the bottom end and uh, get it so it doesn't move. We use these plastic straps that we never used for the duct. It was four inches. So this just come right around. There, that 
guy's not coming out now. I've wrapped him over the top, but to stop him from going back, I wrapped him around the back side and just put the screw in. Um, this guy's not sliding out now. So we'll keep a watch on him. But otherwise, I think he's good right now. Let's get on to the other guy. Okay, so guys, I wrapped one across the front to keep it down, and then I saddled it across the back and around and wrapped the front like I did on the other one. That'll keep it moving back and forth out, and I'll keep it stopped from coming up and down. I put a tap screw in the back just to keep it up so that way it didn't fall. That should be it on these guys. Now you'll notice from my brilliance a couple episodes ago or a couple weeks ago, whatever it was, we did all these manifolds, got them all together, but we forgot one glue joint, and that was right here. So she's leaking right here, and I'm gonna have to now figure out how to get it out. I think it's gonna be undoing this coupling. The valves are off. If I can undo this coupling, I might be able to pull it back and pop it off to get some glue on it. It'll be full of water, but you know, in fact, why don't I empty the line first? That's right here. All the valves are closed. Holy mother up. Wow, that was uneventful. We barely got any water out. <laughs> don't want to glue it without that on there. Just making sure I glued everything else. And that's how it is. Let's open the valves and let her go. Just making sure. Put some virgin dirt right there just to see if we catch any other leaks. From here I can look at the other side and it looks dry. I don't see anything there. I think I was just leaking out of the coupling here. I want to see if this actually harmonizes and equalizes in the tanks. Then I can get an actual estimate of actually where the water was at. Because if you remember we didn't know exactly how much was in the other tank besides maybe 250 maybe. I don't hear any more noise going in the transferring of water through the pipe or in this other guy. So I think it equalized. Let's go ahead and check to see how much we have. Hmm. Okay. There's still too much water in this big tank. I wonder if it's an air. If there's air's not getting out of the tank fast enough. Let's come back and see if over the day it just kind of equalizes slowly, but there's air holes in the outspouts at the top. So air should be able to get in. There's no vacuum, I don't think. Let's just keep going. All right, so we moved over actually here to the troughs because a couple of things. I am missing one elbow, that's one inch elbow. And uh, 
therefore I can't take that one inch conversion to go down and snake it. So I am stuck there until I get a one inch elbow. I got a 45, but I don't have a one inch elbow, a 90. So and I need a 90 degree, or at least two of them. So anyway, we've transitioned over here, partly also because my extra three quarter inch pipe is over here for the faucet that I want to put up top. So I'm going to start here first. So we have these troughs and in the haste from what we did last time that we were down here, we've got these downspouts that are sitting over here. Well, I didn't put a shutoff valve on them. So I want to put a shutoff valve on the verticals on both of them. And then I actually have the valve for the, the water. Um, that's going to go inside the tank. So I want to go ahead and get that in on the other side because that's pasture six and that's where the buffalo are going to be going first. So this is all part of this whole rainwater thing and uh, I'm just trying to make sure we have shutoffs where we need them. The Rojo valve that I'm using has an automatic shutoff when you take the valve off um, to do any maintenance to it. But if the buffalo were to ever actually knock out the pipe or the pipe busts, I don't want to have to lose all the water in that whole line um, so I'm just going to put an extra valve down here. Just about any spot is good as any other. Tell you what, there are a lot of spiders around here. Crickets, spiders, all sorts of stuff. want to make sure I get my valve shut off on this side. Let's see if I was to take about an inch off. There's one. All right, let's see if that works. Yeah, <laughs> just in the middle of gluing, so, <laughs> all right, bye. I get a call from my dad and he's all like, hey, do you want me to just leave you alone right now since you're in the middle of stuff? I'm like, uh, yeah, so I'll call him later. So this is the Rojo valve. It's a low flow valve. This is gonna attach the PVC. That's gonna be coming out at the bottom here, but in the other trough. Um, and it has this ball here that just floats in the water and when it comes up, it stops. When it goes down, it opens. So this, this is allowing me to work with fed from like one to five PSI. This is all a gravity fed water tank. There's no water tank pressure. So whatever I can get, and I'm about, I would say about 10 feet at best um, below the water tanks um, from the exit. So if I'm 10 feet, I think about every one foot, if I'm right, is about 0.6 PSI. That would put me at six PSI if I'm 10 feet. Now, you might be asking, if I put this all the way down at the bottom, that ball is just gonna be sitting right there. It's probably not gonna do a lot of good. So, they have a string. So I can float the ball on a string and as it raises and lowers, it comes down and connects to here and it opens and closes it. So. The float is actually gonna be a floating ball in this case since I'm putting it underwater. Now, I wanted to put this here, but they made a one and a quarter inch outlet and this only goes up to three quarter inch. The second problem I have is that the threads are flush with the bottom of the tank, so it's really a stupid spot to put it. Um, and so I can't screw anything on on the inside. Um, so the cap I'm gonna to to put in on the outside. The other one is right over here um, when it's just flush in the ground. Um, I could do something there, but again, it's just getting the water to it. I have to come up from underneath. Um, right now, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna come up and over. It might be simpler. However, maybe in the future it'll change, but I'm gonna give that a shot right now. I think it looks good. That looks good. Time 
Time to fill in the hole. There we go. All right, other side. done with the water. Um, the last thing except is we just have to hook up that little spigot which I'm just gonna get a little bit more three-quarter inch pipe um, and then we just got to connect those two things right up at the top and that's it. I mean that's, that's pretty much all we've got to do. So um, we're flying along. Um, next week we're gonna go ahead and have the water flow down and fill up this water trough since I can't do that right now, since I can't get it connected. So otherwise, that would have been on the agenda today. So I appreciate you joining along. Um, we're almost there. I'm actually probably going to head over to Steve's right now and just solidify things on the bison, making sure the ones that we're wanting we're getting um, details. And hopefully I'll come back to you soon with a shipment date and the anticipated time in which they arrive. So anyway, keep following along. Appreciate it. We'll catch you next week.